this morning. We are excited that you're here. We've got a couple of quick announcements for you. If you are checking us out for the first time, we would love for you to text NEW SC to 88202. That's NEW SC to 88202. Fill out some information. We would love to be able to follow up with you and check in on you this week. We have prayer, prayer and Bible study this Wednesday uh, via Zoom at 7.30 p.m. So check your email for the link to sign on and join us for that. Daily Devos. Pastor Scott sends out Daily Devos. Every once in a while I shoot my, my little word in there too, but he sends them out daily. Um, so be checking uh, Sanctuary webpage um, or the Facebook page yep. um, to uh, listen to those. Next week, you have one week. It's Mother's Day next week. So it's a warning for all dads and children. And children. You need to get that done. Um, please make sure that you guys do something special for your mom next Sunday. Mark it in your calendar. Set a reminder for the day before or even two days before. It'll pop up and remind you. You're welcome for that. Um, and just like we've said before, just keep checking your emails. That's how we're communicating any updates, changes, news, announcement, anything like that. Hey guys, hey, we want to encourage you uh, to consider giving today. As you know, the ministry of the church continues, even though we haven't been in our building for a little while. <clears throat> it continues. We continue to pay a lease. We continue to pay staff. We continue to do those things. So we want to encourage you to give as God enables you. And there are four ways that you can give. First, you can give online at sanctuaryvacaville.com slash give. You can also do text to give. You can text your amount to 84321 and give that way. If you have any questions on setup with that or how to do that, let me know and I can help you out. You can also mail it to the church at 2024 Nut Tree Road, Vacaville, California, 95687. Or you can drop it by the office. And also, if it helps, we could also come pick it up for you and do a curbside pickup yep. if that helps you out. So thanks for giving. Your giving support helps us do all the ministry that we do. Uh, this last week, we sent out $250 to help with our missions giving awesome. with Henry Smith. So we thank you for that. If you want to continue to give towards that, you can also still give towards his ministry and also any missions giving as well. So thank you. Hey, we're excited to get into our third uh, message of our series, Pray Like Jesus. And we pray the last two weeks have been encouraging to you, they've helped you, and they have, uh, they have helped you grow closer to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this week we get into uh, part three of our message. You know, when I was a kid, there were a lot of things I found difficult. You know, whether it was riding a bike, or whether it was trying to tie my shoes, or whether it was fractions. Heather's been teaching third graders fractions this last few weeks. Uh, whistling, you know, cleaning my room. You know, there were a number of things that just didn't come easy because we didn't know how to do them. You know, but as I grew, things got easier. But one of the things that was hard then that still remains hard now is sometimes knowing what is needed and what is wanted. Like, what is a need, what is a want? And it becomes true even today. You know, in the midst of all that we've gone through, we wrestle with that thing. You know, and some of us, we really had to come to terms with that. Like, what is it that I really need? Versus what is it that it's just simply a want? You know, I go into a grocery store and, you know, I'll be like, we should get this. And Heather's like, oh, do we really need that? I'm like, we always need Reese's <laughs> Peanut Butter Cups. You know, we always need, sure, we need bags of Doritos. But the reality is we don't, do we? And I think all of us, we fall prey to that where we oftentimes will give into so many things that are wants and they're not really needs. You know, so all around us, we're told that if we're going to be happy, we need the right kind of house or the right kind of spouse or the right kind of car. You know, the right kind of this or the right kind of that. And there's just that pressure to always think that if we get these things that we, we think we need, it'll make life easier. But we know that's not true. Technology is a great example of that, isn't it? Where we say, I need this technology, and yet it ends up making more work for us at times. You know, to be honest, we have loved you being online, but we look forward to being together. Being online has actually caused us to have to go a lot more into technology, which has been great, but it's actually made things a lot busier for us. Mm -hmm. And so we recognize that while it's, we think, well, we need to do this, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be easier. And so there's just that reality. And, and of course, the, you know, this affects how we pray. You know, it affects how we pray in light of our perceived needs. And in turn, it affects how we pray for other people. You know, we pray for needs versus wants. And so when we pray, where are we praying for what we need? And I think this is the passage that is going to challenge that today. What is it that I need versus what is it that I want? And so God is going to speak to us. And this morning we return to the prayer. And that prayer was traditionally known as the Lord's Prayer. And as we come back to it, you know, we discover that Jesus wants to teach us not simply about prayer, but also about true needs. 
And so today again we look at the provision of prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. And this provision, what does it do? It speaks to the Father who meets our needs. Mm. And so it says in Matthew 9, uh, I'm sorry, Matthew 6, 9 through 13, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive those who are debted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil, evil one. Today, again, we look at the provision of prayer. Give us today our daily bread. So the first point that we get to talk about is provided by God. Matthew 6, 11, give us today our daily bread. The foremost meaning of daily bread, food. God will provide it. Mm -hmm. We are to pray for God's daily supply of provision for our lives. Do you wake up daily and pray this prayer? I know I don't. For coffee, probably. But yeah, probably. Actually, that's probably pretty yeah, accurate. Probably very true, yes. God, I trust you with meeting my needs today. How much different will your outlook on the day be when you pray this way? I challenge you this week, every single day, wake up and say, God, I trust you with meeting my needs today. And how different does that make your day? Is there more to this prayer than meets the eye? Is it simply a request for rye or sourdough, a petition for a slice of bread, or a wish for a loaf? If we look down toward the end of the same chapter, Jesus talks again about God's provision. Look at Matthew 6, 31 through 34. It says, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But, <clears throat> seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. When you seek him first, and you do your part, you allow him to then come in and do his part. Therefore, an underline square circle that therefore. This is a really important point. Do not worry about tomorrow. That's right. For tomorrow will worry about itself. <clears throat> Each day has enough trouble of its own. <clears throat> After giving them the Lord's Prayer, he says, Don't worry about fasting, money, food, clothes. Some worry comes from the worry of how our needs will be met. You know, during this time, we, we, we've heard of a lot of people going, I don't know how I'm going to make my next meal. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to make rent this month. Some worry comes from our tendency to compare. You know, as a teacher, I always look at other teachers and see what they're doing, and I always feel like I'm not doing enough. And that comes from the worry. I sit and I worry, and I get anxious about it, and I, I just, I, I stew, and that's not good. Some worry comes from false perceptions we have. So let's take a moment. What are you worrying about right now? What pops into your head when I say, don't worry about tomorrow? What pops into your head? What are you anxious about? And I want to take a second to just pray. And we're going to lay it at his feet. And we're going to give it back to God. So let's bow our heads. Lord, we lay all of these things at your feet. I don't know the needs of our people. I don't know who needs what right now. But God, you do. And so God, any worry, any anxiety, any fear. Lord, I pray that as, as we pray together, Lord, we are laying it at your feet. And we are giving it to you. God, we release it to you. And God, as we release it to you, God, I pray that your peace would just replace that fury, that your peace would replace that anxiety, that your peace would replace that worry. And God, I pray that we are able to lay it at your feet and leave it there. Yes. We give all of this to you in holy, precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus, in talking about provision, moves beyond the bread and talks about drink and clothing as well. He tells us that God knows what we need that we need all these things. There's that word again, need. Some of us have prayed and are praying this prayer with a clear sense of the need. You pray trusting God will provide. When I was a junior in college, I had called my dad up and I said, Dad, I don't want to play basketball anymore. They, I, it's just not what I want to do. The coach had been asked to step down. So I had, I called him and I said, look, it's just not in it for me. And he goes, well, how do you expect to pay for your last year of college? And I said, I'll get a job. And he goes, I don't know. And I said, God, I said, Dad, God will make a way. If he wants me to be here, God will make a way. And I kid you not, within a month I had a phone call from 
um, one of our administrators there saying, hey, you've been selected as um, someone to receive a scholarship that will help your senior year, but it will also go towards your master's program following. And I mean, in that moment, God just provided. I, I put it back in his hands and I said, God, if you want to make this happen, make it happen. If you want me here, make it happen. And he will. There are others who have a difficult time with this request because their cupboards and closets are full. You are thanking God he has already provided. You see, our daily prayer for bread should ultimately be with extreme gratefulness, a daily confession of our dependence upon the hand of God. Amen. That's right. Our cupboards and our closets are full because God has filled them. As someone once said, the request in verse 11 is for our needs, not our greeds. And I'm going to say that again. It's for our needs, not our greeds. God will provide everything we need to accomplish everything he desires. Not everything we desire. Everything he desires. Sometimes we may not need as much as we think. We just figured that out just in the last couple months. Um, there's just a lot of things that we're realizing we don't need anymore. You know, and we can get rid of it. We can do whatever we need, but it's we don't need it. That was a want. This doesn't mean God does not bless some with other resources to be used in the work of extending his influence. It simply means that our desires need to be tempered by the reality of what we really need to accomplish what God calls us to do. That's right. That's good. You know, next we realize this is that in this prayer we recognize there is peace, independence. You know, really, you think about this is true. Is as a kid, I remember how much peace I had as long as I knew I was around my mom and my dad. I was at peace. Now that didn't mean that you know things weren't going crazy around our, <clears throat> our home or that there wasn't things happening that were uncertain, but I knew there was peace because I knew what my dependency was. Mm -hmm. And as long as I knew I could yeah. trust in my mom and my dad, I was, I was, I had peace. And I think sometimes that's where we have to come in terms of our relationship with God. And, you know, the Lord's Prayer should do a few things. First, it should drive us to a deeper dependence on God. You know, sometimes maybe what the Lord is trying to do in your life right now is bring you to a place of where you are trusting Him more, more dependent upon Him, and more just recognizing that if God is the one who can meet my needs, then I really don't need to worry about it. Mm -hmm. Now, I realize that's easier said than done sometimes, but maybe that brings you back to that same prayer over and over. God, I trust you. I depend on you. Help me to remember that. And so we do that, and we encourage you to that. Where are you allowing your prayers to help drive you to a deeper dependence upon God? Mm -hmm. Secondly, it's a greater contentment. You know, this goes back to what we've talked about a number of times, where I recognize that my contentment isn't found in the things. It's found in my relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. It's found in, in the life that He is providing for me. It's found in, in what He is able to do in my life. And so often i found what's more fulfilling isn't in the stuff I have, but in the lives that I can impact. I hope you, you hear that for a moment. Your true measure of life is not in the stuff that you have, mm -hmm. but in the lives that you can impact. I'd rather be poor in wealth and rich in life and relationships. And you think about it, you know, you lose all your money, you can lose all that in an instant, but you know what can be sustained in all this is your relationships. Mm -hmm. There are many who are in the stock market. I read today that, that the top nine billionaires lost $26 billion this last weekend because of the stock market. But you know what I would say is that none of us hopefully have lost his relationship. Right. And ultimately our faith in Christ and our relationship with God, it's a sustaining thing that we can trust and hold on to. Yeah. And so we find that our greater contentment isn't in the stuff and the things. And so we, we invite the Holy Spirit to lead us to a place of dependency upon God where we find that contentment. And it leads us hopefully to this, a biblical perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I think we get confused by a cultural perspective and a biblical perspective. So somebody will say something and I'll remind them that that's really more a cultural perspective or maybe a personal opinion and we think it's biblical, but oftentimes it may not be. And we, we see that in this thing of like, you know, I, I need this, but is it something you really need? According to scripture, is it something you really need? Or is it something you really just want? In? Because again, we tend to compare ourselves with others. We tend to compare ourselves with the surroundings around us or we even feel the pressure to keep up with the Joneses, don't we? <clears throat> but what's the biblical perspective? And search scripture. Ask the Lord. Ask somebody who, who you trust for wisdom. Is where 
do I find contentment? Because when I have a biblical perspective and I have a deeper dependence on God, I find that I, I'm at a place where as long as God's meeting my needs, He's providing the peace that I need, <clears throat> and with that comes the joy oftentimes that we are looking for. Mm -hmm. Our next point is, it's a prayer of confidence. God's pattern is to provide for his children on a daily basis. That's right. I'm going to say that again. Yeah. God's pattern <clears throat> is to provide for his children on a daily basis. I don't know that I ever actually thought about that. Yeah. Like, I know that he's able to provide, and I know that he's there, and, you know, every day I talk to him and I pray to him, but, like, yeah. I don't think I ever really thought that's his pattern, to provide for his children on a daily basis. It's like... Our parents, hopefully, you know, that you, you're in a home where your parents are providing for you on a daily basis. Um, growing up, my parents provided for me on a daily basis, right? Um, we can have confidence that God will provide. When they heard daily bread, I am sure many went back to the story of the manna. So I'm not going to read the whole story to you. Um, but Exodus 16, you need to go back and read it. It's an excellent, excellent story. Um, the Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. It doesn't say hoard it for a month and a half. It says gather enough for that day. Today's context would probably be toilet, toilet paper. paper. Right. Or Lysol wipes. True, true. And apparently hair dye is now becoming the new item that's falling off the shelves. Anyway, there are um, the people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they follow my instructions. First, he challenged them to trust him. So where am I trusting God with my words and in my actions? Mm -hmm. That's good. Then he challenged them to live without complaining. <laughs> I challenge you to live that too. All of that. Oh, me. all of us. Yeah, me too. I'll challenge never myself too. Ever. No, you never do. Never. No. Where am I not allowing my attitude and perception to be off? Avoid complaining and avoid criticism. It's getting warm outside. Mm -hmm. That's where my complaining takes off. He challenged them also to remember. They placed some of the manna in the Ark of the Covenant. Where has God taken care of you in the past? And what do you do to remember? Mm -hmm. There's so many times where I forget everything that God has provided. And in those moments where I'm like, God, you're not giving me what I want. But he has. Like looking back, I can look at all the things that he has given to me, that he has come through on in so many ways. Yeah. So let us remember when we pray, give us this day our daily bread. Well, Paul said to the Philippians, Philippians 4.19, My God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. God has what we are in need of. In the richness of God, our needs are met. We seek first his kingdom because we know he will meet our needs. That's right. That's right. You think about that story of the Israelites. You know, the Israelites had just come out of Egypt mm -hmm. and God had done miraculous things. I mean, you know, you walk through water and you see it parted and yet still they find reasons to complain. Mm -hmm. Before the, the parting of the water, they saw God do all these miraculous things to rescue them and bring free them freedom out of Egypt and yet... Three days after they leave Egypt, you know, they complain and they walk again the water, through the water and they complain. It, it was as if somehow it's human nature. And so maybe part of what God is trying to do is work out some of the broken human nature in us to mm -hmm. help us recognize again that where, where all of this comes from. But also to kind of work out what's maybe still in us. You know, I sometimes wonder what from Egypt still lies in our hearts. You know, what from... You know, in a sense, Egypt, in, a, in a, an allegorical sense, still lies in your heart that God's trying to work out in you. And getting us to a place of trusting Him helps us to begin to work out some of those things. You know, Matthew 6, 31 through, through, through uh, 34, a very familiar verse we've shared over the last few weeks. So don't worry, say, what, what, what shall you eat? What shall you drink? What shall we wear? 
For the pagans run after these things, and your Heavenly Father knows that you need them. And this is an important thing. God already knows what you need. Yep. So he's saying you don't need to run after the things like pagans do. People who don't trust in God run after things out of worry and out of concern and out of uncertainty and out of, out of anxiety. But God already knows what we need. But then he goes, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. So because God already knows what I, knows what I need, I can live the life that he's calling me to. And I don't have to make decisions that will maybe set aside what I know is right and what is good. And so I can help my neighbor because I know my, that my God is going to take care of me here. I know I can remain faithful in my relationships because I know God is taking care of me in my relationships. I know that I don't need to go steal bread because I know that God will provide me the bread that I need. And so he's saying you don't have to give up living the right life that God calls you to because he already knows everything you need and he will be the God that takes care of you. And so when I seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, all these things will be given to me as well. And therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. And each day has enough trouble of its own. And I've even thought as we close that idea that there's something that I'm, I'm thinking about a lot and realize Man, I can't even do anything about it right now, so why am I worried about it? What can I take care of today? What can I do today? What can I focus on today? Knowing that God's already in tomorrow. Mm -hmm. God's already gone before me. God's already ahead of me, and I can trust in that. <clears throat> so we, when, we, when we learn that God will take care of our needs, we can move forward in the faith towards what He calls us to do today. We move beyond ourselves and our anxious worry, and so when we worry, we go back to this point. God knows my need. I can therefore remain obedient to his leading. And so what are you worried about? How is sidetracking God's call, God's purpose, and God's plan? How is it doing that? Let us take some time to pray about it and put it before him and trust God. And so I want to invite you now to grab your communion elements. We're going to take communion together. And in this time, maybe take a pause as you gather your elements, but also take a pause as a family and pray together. What is it that keeps us from trusting God daily? What is the Holy Spirit speaking to you? And what is it you can put before the Lord this morning? You know, it says on the night that he was betrayed that he took the bread and he took the cup. And he prayed over it. And he took the bread and he said that this bread would represent his body which would be broken for you and for me. <clears throat> and so when we look at it, we're reminded <clears throat> that he took upon himself our sin, he took upon himself our shame, and he took upon himself our brokenness. And so when we take it, remember that. And he prayed over it and he said, take and eat it in remembrance of him. Let's take and eat it this morning. And then it says in the same manner that he took the cup. And he said this cup would represent the, new, the, the covenant that would now be established between us and God. This new covenant that was now given to us because of what Jesus would do on the cross and would be accomplished in his resurrection. And so he blessed it and he prayed over it. And he said that it would be by his stripes that we were healed. And he took and he prayed, for it, he prayed over this and he said, do this in remembrance of me. Let's take and drink this morning. You know, I want to invite you to now gather with your family and pray together. You know, listen to the altar song and maybe worship together one more time. Look at the questions that we post online and consider what is it that God is saying to you this morning. And I want to invite, invite you, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, I want to invite you to that today. You can simply say a prayer that says, God, forgive me of my sins. Lord, today I choose to follow you. I accept your son, Jesus. And then make that prayer and put it before the Lord. And when you say that prayer, let us know. We'd love to know more about that. We'd love to help you find and really discover the life in Christ that God has for you. You guys have a great Sunday. We'll see you next week. We have a great Mother's Day service planned online. Um, and we want to encourage you to be a part of that. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.